All right, I'm gonna say that again. So where, uh, where is this pencil laying on this cup? Closer to you, farther away, where? It's the center of the cup. Uh, how do you know that? Because I can tell because it's over the, the arm of the cup. Okay. Does it, does anybody but else? It looks, like, it looks like it's farther away. Yeah. I, does anybody, I was saying farther away because it was like hitting the, the handle. That was my like logic of why. Okay. I was so welcome to, <laughs> welcome to perspective. Look, wait, let's see. <laughs> welcome to perspective. See where it is? Right in the center. Can you guys see that? It's right in the center. It does not look, this is perspective. The idea of perspective is that every object has a, a side and a change of plane. And so as things get farther away from you on the two dimensional plane, they get smaller and more detailed. So I will tell you that every single person I've ever taught, including people who have taught themselves to draw who are very good, screw this up. They do this. They draw their coffee cup. Here, I'll sketch this for you. They do two things. They draw the coffee cup. All right. They draw the coffee cup as if these two sides look equal. And they make this flat. Because in their mind, in your left brain, let's put it this way, in your left brain, you understand that the cup sets flat on the surface and on your on in your and your left brain you get that these are two halves so the thing to get out of your mind when we start dealing with perspective particularly with cuts is that everything has a side has more than one side so there is the front side of the cup here i'm going to lay this again there's the front side and then there's the back side. And even though these are equal halves, they don't look like they're equal halves. The back side is always smaller. It's a little bit more angled up. It's a little bit like this. Remember that road that we used to learn to draw when we were a kid? We know that this road does not rise up. We know that this road is flat on the ground. We know that this road over here is the same size as it is here, right? But we know that that's not how it looks when you're drawing something in perspective. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. Jessica has a lot more to say about it. I have <laughs> a lot gonna, to say about perspective. She's gonna teach you a lot about perspective. So one of the things you're gonna to feel today is things that feel right to you are going to be wrong and things that are, I want you to really be focusing on shape. And this concept that this round thing is just one sided, we also have to get rid of. So there is a, there's a second side to this. I, I spent a lot of, I have a sort of love for drawing coffee cups because when I was studying art in Armenia 10 years ago, uh, I lived there for a couple of years, um, I hired this guy, a really good artist in a small town in Armenia to teach me art. And he was gonna teach me, at that time I'd been painting about 10 years. And he asked me to draw these skulls that he had given me. And I drew them and he looked at them and went, yeah, you don't know anything about perspective. <laughs> you, you need to start with a coffee cup. So we're gonna keep returning to this coffee cup. There's actually a beginning drawing lesson on how to draw a coffee cup on the uh, video channel. Addie, the, Addie, you have access to that. And you guys at the Art at Work program, you have access to that. You should go back and review that after doing this lesson if you really want to you know, sort of learn about how this works. Um, so having said that. Yeah, I want to just add one thing on to what Leah is saying. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'm going to write up all my speaking points for um, my perspective chat, which is going to be very friendly. <laughs> um, some people like to say that there are no hard and fast rules in art, but there are, and perspective is one of them. Yes. And it 
it, it is like a non-negotiable. It's like gravity. It's non-negotiable. Yes. It's non-negotiable. <laughs> and once you learn it, it will click in your head and you will literally be able to very quickly analyze anything in perspective. And it's not as intimidating as it seems. Um, and then the other thing about it is when somebody comes to you and they say to you, I want feedback on my painting. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's the very a first thing, problem. it's <laughs> almost, well, it's not always a perspective issue, but it, it often is, especially yeah. for somebody who doesn't know it. And you will be able to tell in a split second, looking what at any is. artwork anybody has ever done, if they understand perspective or not. And it doesn't matter if it's figurative or still life or landscape, you will be able to tell in a split second, does this person know perspective or not? It's really like that cut and dry. Right. which means it's teachable and it means that you can all learn it and it's going to be fabulous. But there, that, fabulous. that is a hard and fast rule. Perspective yeah. does follow hard and fast rules. And if you so, don't follow them, we can tell. <laughs> you can tell, you we can, can tell. tell and it will look weird and wrong yeah. and off and cause all kinds of problems. So, so I would that's, say that's, thank excellent. you, Leah. <laughs> Janet, you missed this, but Jessica is going to, that's about right. Jessica is going to, um, maybe down a little bit. Jessica is going to teach us a workshop, has offered to teach a workshop on perspective. Oh, yay, because I suck at that. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. It's hard to get your mind Yeah, you it. saying that now, and once you get your head around it, you, it'll like click in, and you're like, oh, right. it's that actually drawing, not. That drawing I did for the mugshot project. Yeah. I was trying to draw that out of my head and I couldn't figure out the perspective to save my life. So I ended up having to get my daughter <laughs> to pose and take you a can picture. Figure it out. Yep. Because I couldn't yep. figure it out. Yep. All right. I'll show All you right. how to get around that, Janet. I, I can I can show you exactly how to get around that. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, guys, it's not so that that's hard. gonna be that's gonna be in March. Uh, March 9th, and we will uh, announce more information about that. Next week yes. will be a painting basics class on Tuesday, but let's talk for a little bit about what we're going to need today. So uh, we are going to sketch, we're going to paint this cup, um, but I don't want you to be intimidated by what I really liked about this cup is all the, not really these designs, it's more like where the light is coming from. So this is kind of an unusual perspective. We don't deal, speaking of perspective, we don't deal with it very much. Can somebody say what direction the light's coming from? Go ahead, jump in. Addie, do you know? Emma, go ahead. The back, like behind the cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can you tell? Because exactly. of the shadow. Because of the shadow. What's the shadow doing? Um, the shadow's going toward us, basically. It, right, which means that the light, so it means that most of this cup, except for some of the handle, is in shadow and a little bit of the inside of the cup. So we're going to start by sketching this cup. Um, and then I'm going to show you, because everything's in shadow, all of these whites are going to be, are mostly gray. So we're going to practice mixing grays, and you're going to start with kind of a gray going to have options on how to mix your grays. So uh, I'll talk about the palette in a minute, but basically for those of you who are new, we're going to need a piece of uh, ca um, canvas sheet or a canvas board. Uh, you're going to need a pencil. We are not going to use a grid today. Um, you'll need, as always, a big brush. When I say big brush, I mean this is a one inch this is about one in, a little bit less than one inch across if you have anything smaller than this uh put it away you you can use it later in the session but for the start we're going to work we're going to do everything with a big brush you'll need palette paper so you can mix your colors uh you'll need a few paint colors and then you'll need if you have it uh this is uh, a palette knife is great and I have my water over here. I have a cup of water over here, so you'll see that. Now, if you don't have uh, painting supplies, you could do this with a pencil. So let me start by sending, oh, what do I do? Oh, my phone's over there. Be right back. Isis, what do you want? 
No, it's not dinner time. Go away. Does anybody no, have really go get oh my God. So does anybody want more cats? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Let me take get a picture eat. of this. So you guys can see the black and white before I start drawing on it. So here is the black and white. We always start with the black. So those of you who don't have paint, if you just, uh, uh, Carolyn, if you don't have painting supplies, you can totally just use a pencil and a piece of paper and an eraser. And you can work with the black and white of this. So if that's going to work for you, do it. Those of you who've got paint, we will talk about that. This is a good one for black and white. Okay. And in fact, it's very pretty. So notice that the first thing I did was draw the line basically where the halfway point of the cup is. So just like we looked at, these two sides are equal, but they don't look equal. So what's happening on this back half that is not happening on this front half? If you'll notice, it's a little bit more angled. Here, oh, that's hard to see. Let's see. I'll take a picture of this so you guys can really see it. You'll notice the back half, just like a road, is kind of angled and rising up, okay? It's not flat. The back half kind of rises up a little bit. The front half comes out, it's so hard to see. The front half kind of comes out, pops out a little bit more. All right, I'm sketching out our first lines because we don't have a grid. Uh, we'll, we'll stop on that. We'll stop there. Because we don't have a grid, um, I'm going to show you some measuring techniques as we go through this to try and make this easier for you to eyeball as we say accurately. So I actually like to start, I've got a pencil, I've got my eraser. I actually like to start with my circle. And instead of trying to draw, let's see, I wanna see something. Yes, okay. Instead of trying to draw um, a curved line that goes back, I actually kind of break, um, break my curves up into kind of sharp lines that angle and connect. So if you see, I've got like here, one on this side, one on the other side, that's like here and here. And then I can kind of connect those like this. I may adjust this later, but right now, this is where I'm going. And then the front has like a curve, it kind of comes out like hips or something. <laughs> I get like, see that? It kind of comes out. And we know that like, basically that this top half is like twice the size of the bottom half. So if my halfway point line is right here, and I come from here to the halfway point and I come down, once I come down twice, is that right? Um, here, yep. Mm, it's a little bit higher than halfway. One, two, three, two. The, that, that the bottom of the cup is about twice, a little bit less than twice the top of the cup to your middle line. So you can go ahead and start with that. And then see, I can kind of, once I've got my bottom in and I've got my sides, I can kind of more easily draw that shape the way it's meant to be shaped. So let's start with that. It's like a little skinny, kind of funny looking football. I'll take a picture. So I'm going to take a picture of two things and send it across the thread. I'm going to take a picture of this. Just come really stoked about this, uh, about your class. I think it's going to be great. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for letting me um, so do that happy. for you. That's amazing. I think it's going to be really exciting. 
I want to make it very accessible for people. Yes. So, yep. so Leah, just to clarify, you would like actually draw in that straight line across the middle? Yeah, I think it'll help you locate. You can always erase it. Cool. Yeah, I think it'll help you kind of locate where things are. So you start by like drawing the halfway, right? Here, let me draw this in. You, you start by drawing the back half, then you do the front half. And since this is the hardest part, this is where I really want to focus people's attention. And see, I think this is kind of mentally a, you know, a challenge. So one of the things you have to say to yourself is, I know that the back half of anything I'm looking at is going to be smaller than the front half, even if when I'm looking at them in front of each other, they are the same size. You need to tell yourself, not only that, the back half kind of rises up a little bit on this flat surface to convey three dimensions, even though we know it's sitting. <laughs> and go ahead and take a picture. Yeah, it looks like a little like funky flying saucer. I'd like to see that, um, I'd like to see that line because I want to make sure you're understanding the concept of the halfway point. Hey, hey Leah, can I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be obnoxious because hmm. we're talking perspective. My head is in that mode. Um, where are we in relation to the coffee cup? We're in front of it. And also? We're above it. We're above, above it. it. Yes, we mm -hmm. are above it. We're above it. And that's really important to notice. Yes, because that means that like a uh, coffee line is at a certain place. Exactly. And, that's very different. and it's very different from yesterday's exercise. I will show you the painting demo from yesterday's exercise. If you want to, you can go, right? This is a very different mm -hmm. perspective. So there is a video up on the uh, art on the channel where you can see how to paint this and talk about how to draw this, paint and draw this. Very different perspective. Yep. So you're right. It all depends on how you're looking at it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just important to establish that, I guess. Yes. Because it helps with what Leah's doing with the midpoint. And you see how she drew the line to establish, but we're looking a little bit down at it. And that's why it's so far back and why Absolutely. our left brain might not see it because we're looking at it in terms of shape. Like Leah's trying to get you to look at it in terms of shape, which is uh, Amber, exactly correct. Down too far. I can tell you already, down too far, bring it up. And this, uh, on the, this bottom half, what you've got is this, I'll show you, you're doing that. See that? Wait, I want to sketch it in. Here we go. That's what you did. So bring that in. Yes, thank you, Jessica. Excellent. I can't wait. No, I'm sorry. It's I'm not meaning to be obnoxious. And I a thousand percent like Leah is explaining it really, really, really well. It's just um, ask yourself where you are in relation to your subject as well. And that's why what Leah's doing makes sense if you realize where you are in relation to it. Jean, no. Get me your bet. You've gone too fast. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> Go back and get this, get this right. Um, you've drawn something that looks like an almond shape. Get that circle right. I can't see a center line. I don't see your center line. I have no idea. I, 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 this is too high up in the back. You've gone ahead without, you've gone ahead without paying attention to perspective and you messed it up. So come back, pull back, get to here, get this right first. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just think you need to bring up this line, Amber, focus on that. Don't worry so much about the back line. Um, this is important because uh, you'll, you know, even when you think you're getting it right, you'll mess it up again and again. Your brain is going to make the curve lines too big. Let's see. Okay. And then there's a couple of other things I'm going to do as you guys are doing this, I'm going to show you as well. So I'm going to take the measure of this, the, the width of the cup, and I want to see 
Oh, look at that. So if I measure the width of the cup from one side to the other along that center line, if I bring it down here, you'll see that the width of the cup is exactly the uh, length of the cup. So I can then come here and I can do that same thing here. So see, I'm teaching you how to like kind of eyeball something. It starts with getting the outer proportions. And once you've established this, which you can do kind of randomly, then you use this to help you uh, get other measurements. Wait, can you just reshow? Yeah. See how I measured this right along the edge of the center line? So I'm taking my pencil and I'm going from this end and I'm with my finger here, I'm blocking off the other hand. And now I'm lining it up with the length of the cup and look at what we see. What do we see? How, how long is the cup? How tall is the cup? It's the same width as this. See that? Does that make sense? Totally. I just wasn't sure if you were putting it from including that top part. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. I'm including this part here. So it's a bottom part here. So that's one of the ways, and then I mark it so I know where it is. So before I start drawing anything, and you know, that's before I try to draw the outer shapes, I'm actually paying attention to, and let's look at what's happening at the bottom of the cup since we're there. Is this a flat line? No, it's quite curved. Because the side of the cup starts about here and here. In fact, I, I know this kind of messes things up for those of you who are looking at it, but I think it's important to see this, the front of the cup stops about here and these are the sides. It's a little bit like a cube. Right? So we also learned the QS. Oh, that's hard to see here. Let's see. How can I sketch this so it can be visually seen? Um, so here's a cube. Right? So we know that this cube has different sides. And we know because it's a cube that all these sides are equal. But do the sides look equal? No. This side is smaller and this side is, looks smaller than this side. And that's because they're further away from us. They're also rising up and they're going at an angle. So as things go away from us, so this is the front of the cup and here is the side. Let's see. Okay, better Amber, all right. All right, so now when I sketch this out, I can do a kind of straight line here for the front. Can someone? I think Caroline's- Okay, on. Caroline, you need to, um, you need to, I guess, give me your email address. Hold on and I'll send you the chat link. Okay, hold on. Seconds. Is it just Carolyn Haskins at buzzfeed.com? Uh, yeah, caroline.haskins at buzzfeed.com. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Caroline. Dot Haskins at okay, you should have it. All right. Um, so once I've got this done, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna draw my bottom edge, and then I know that there's kind of a top, a little angle line here, and an angle line here on either side. See that? I also know that these don't go far out as the edge of the, this doesn't go past the edge of the cup. This comes up to about here. 
so that when I draw my line, I'm more likely to kind of meet. <laughs> it's a little bit like connect the dots. I've had people tell me that before. Okay, this side's a little bit trickier, so we're going to start with the outer edges. Is it so? It looks a little off center. Maybe that's just like my. It is a little off. But it is a little off center because the cup is turned. The cup is not centered. The cup is turned. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is a little bit off center. Uh, in fact, maybe if I want to be really stickler about this, maybe this is the front of the cup, right? Uh, that looks better, doesn't it? Here we go. And that's the side. So let me show you what that looks like here. So really, the center is here, and the side is here. Let me take a picture of this so you guys can see it. Good eye. Very good eye. Okay. I know this is kind of tedious, but it's, um, as I've said many times, there's a lot in art that's tedious, but it's a good kind of tedious. <laughs> so let me get you in here. All right, I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see all the little sketches and things. Don't worry, I have a better picture of this. Yeah, so in that case, it kind of comes. You don't have to draw these lines if you don't want to. It's more just kind of recognizing. Hey, these are the sides. All right. And then we're going to deal with the outside edge. So before I do that, once again, I want to see if I have some kind of measurement for my outside edge. So if I go from here to here, which is as far to the edge of the handle as it goes, and I compare it to here, I can see, oh my gosh, look at that. Virtually, this is half, this is basically from here to here, from here to here, which is the edge of the cup. This is half the distance of the midline. So half the distance here, if I grab that and I get that, I find that you can use a, you can use a measuring tool or you can actually just see how I'm taking my pencil and then doing that, checking to find the halfway point, then I can come here. Oh, I almost went off the paper. It's really right towards the edge is the halfway point. Then I can come down. Before I get these inner things done, I can get this shape. And no, this shape is not a round curve. It doesn't look like it, it's, it's broken up once again. Let's see if I can draw this out. Almost like it's almost like separate little lines that meet. Let me take a picture of that and then try to sketch it for you. So it's like this. I'm drawing an angle up, then kind of over, then down. Then there's this straight line here, right? And then it comes. People always get cup handle, handles wrong when they try to eyeball, when you try to do it too quickly. You put them in the wrong place. And then it looks like it kind of goes up at an angle like that. See that? So that's here. And then I can go back in and soften these. I can go back and soften these so they're more curved. So yeah, this is the whole language we're learning, you guys. And in fact, I might even pull this in just a little bit. I'm looking at that. This is a whole language. I'll show you the last little bit of the outside. Then I'm going to start checking right. Then we've got the inside. So I'm going to just draw my cup straight down. 
to about here. So that's a fairly accurate outer shape. And then I can also add in the shadow here. There's a line here, and then a line going here. And oh, there's even a little kind of triangle in the corner. So that's where we're getting to. This line will feel thicker than you think it should be. And that is because there's also sides to the handle. Go ahead and take a minute here. I'll take a picture of this. Send it over to me. So I'm going to block it for a second. Get it? Yeah. Notice there's a little kind of, if this is not straight, there's a little bump. There we go. See, coffee cups aren't so easy. <laughs> I was like, I remember being so disappointed that I didn't get to learn faces. And then I realized there was so much to learn from the dang coffee cup. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Addie, this is too thin and it's coming down too low. Bring it up. So you're, you have sort of this thing going on. See that? Add Bring your inside of your cup up. There you go. Otherwise, looking pretty good. Make it thicker. And actually, this is a really good point to show that, like, there's an outside area. There's an area that's kind of dark, and there are areas that are kind of light shapes in your cup. And they don't exactly follow. They change depending on what direction the light is coming from. Do you see that? So this is all dark. And this is light. And this, this kind of curvy triangle is light. Um, there's a little bit of a light. Yeah, there's not that much light here on this cup, fortunately. I'm going to be doing mostly shadow today. And then, of course, the last thing we'll do is the coffee. Notice the line for the coffee comes down much lower than here. You really want to be exacting. It's about one length. This really is a language. Drawing, there's a whole different set of rules that is good to know. For the moment, we're just gonna keep this simple. Give me one second, you guys, right now. Amber, this needs to uh, go up a little bit sharper here. So what your uh, handle looks pretty good. Bring your handle also. Your handle is like this. Here, I'll show you. Your handle is kind of like this. See that? Make it a little thicker here. Add that line in there. Oh, weird. You should be going kind of slow. 
I heard that uh, internet is still not great. Uh, Carolyn, this is, I want, so this, the, your, your, this, this, so Carolyn, first of all, this is what your cup is doing? This. All right, you need to bring that up much higher. It's almost a straight line. It should be twice the length from here to here. So if you want to measure it accurately, one, you, you measure this length and then you come down one, two, and that's where the top of your cup is, not down here. Okay, your bottom is narrower than your top. So it doesn't come all the way out to the edge. And then your handle comes out more. Uh, I would, okay, got it. Um, all right, that works, Emma, actually, that totally works. I would recommend those of you who are new to this to come to beginning drawing on Saturdays, because we talk about a lot of this stuff as we're doing it. And it is true, Addie better. Uh, no, Addie, bring this in. This has got to be thicker, see? You haven't made this thicker. Yours is like this without this line. This is what yours looks like. Sorry, I have to keep erasing to show it. Yours looks like this, right? That's what yours looks like. Really, there's this extra line. This is thicker than you think it is. That's the light section. Good. This looks good. Good, Emma. Good, Amber. And do your best, of course. Like sometimes classes sort of suck. Jean, Jean, so much better. Do, um, this is thicker, Jean, and pay attention here to this shape. You just did this, right? Like this, this is kind of a straight up and down, almost an angle, and it's thicker. It's much thicker here than you have it, like twice the size. Make sure you have enough room for this white spot here and also this dark edge. Mm -hmm. Addie, do you have room for this light edge and this dark edge? If you don't, Oh, you so they're, draw. they're like separate lines. I didn't actually- They're separate, that. they're separate lines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you see them? Then yes. <laughs> right. That's it. That's the thing that's weird about right brain. Uh, we are looking only at space and shape, right? So I need to make sure that there's room for this and also for this in my handle. It's crazy, huh? And then let's see. Let's also add in. You know, I, and I think we're going to try uh, underpainting that I haven't done with anybody else because I think it'll work really well for this yeah. assignment. Um, we are. Uh, I think we're going to do. <laughs> Good job. Training the eye to see these, it, like I said, it's a little tedious, but it's um, there are fantastic benefits to it. Learning to think this way is going to, it's not going to get in the way of your thinking of any of the other work you do. Ultimately, it's really going to complement it. It's going to give you a whole new analytical skill set upon which to evaluate things, including writing. Um, but we can talk about that later. I know we're doing this for relaxation, but what's kind of really awesome about it is the better we understand it and the better we do at it, the more we um, sort of uh, help our brain stay healthy and kind of young. All right. And when you've got that, go ahead and add in your coffee cup. And I think, yeah, I think we're gonna do what we did last night. Here. When you guys are ready to see the painting begin and ready to start painting, let me know, because we're going to start with an underpainting, just one color. One color made up of two colors.
Nice, Jean. There you go. Now that's starting to look better. I like it. I like your base. That looks really nice and solid. You've got this sort of rounded shape of this cup. Good job. Are you guys ready to start? Um, are you guys ready to start painting? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take, well, do I wanna take this away for a second? See if I can get everything to fit in here. Better, Addie. And uh, better, Carolyn. Carolyn, what you've got going here is this. I'm gonna show you on here so you can fix it. You've got this happening. See that? So what you need to do is carve in an angle line here where that bulge is and then erase this line. Okay, so we're gonna start. I'm just gonna put this here and here. We're gonna start with the orange underpainting. So this entire painting is gonna be done in orange. All I really need to see right now is the top layer. And my suggestion is to give yourself some cadmium red and some, a yellow of any kind. Cadmium yellow if you've got it, but if you don't, like yellow of any kind. So I'm going to put a little cadmium red here. It's very bright. It doesn't look very bright because this is real. I will take a picture to show you what it looks like. And this is cadmium yellow. Notice I have my little mixing knife so I can mix them together to make orange. I have a pretty orange color. Leah? Yeah. I have cadmium red deep and cadmium yellow light. Try it. And cadmium I have cadmium yellow deep, deep too. Cadmium red, cadmium red deep might change things. Do you have anything sort of lighter and oranger in your red? Probably. I also have cadmium orange. Oh, try cadmium orange. Just put just cadmium by itself? orange down there. Yeah, just by okay. itself. You might put a little bit of cadmium red deep, Jean, on the uh, as well, just to make it a little darker in places. You okay. can see I'm just kind of mixing them together to get a pretty orange. Not a yellowy orange. I'm gonna take a picture of these so you guys can see them. And if you don't have the cadmiums, just take a just take a orange, a red, and a yellow and mix them together. Oh, Amber, that looks great. Addie, great. Good fixes, you guys. I appreciate how closely you're paying attention to this. You're doing great. Here is my color when it's mixed up. You can kind of see what it really looks like. It's not so dull. All right, and then I'm gonna take my big brush like this. And uh, I'm gonna take the rag that I have and I'm gonna squeeze out the extra, I've dipped it in water. I'm gonna squeeze out the extra paint so that when I scoop up paint, like this, the paint is not dripping. Can you see that? I've got kind of a lot of paint on my brush. There's, it's not watery at all. It's kind of piled on there. So that's what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to go to the darkest parts of my painting, which are really the shadows. And I'm laying paint on there. So if your brush feels kind of dry, you're welcome to dip it in water again, like I just did. But once again, you're going to want to take your rag and squeeze it so that you don't have so much water. We'll practice this in brush basics. So that I have a lot of paint kind of laying on my paintbrush. I'm going to paint around this little triangle here. It's going to be a lighter color. And let's see, basically, it's just the background that's really dark. So don't worry if you get um, 
a little paint over into the edge of your cup. That's okay. Cup is a slightly lighter color. You'll see uh, if you want to practice kind of if the paint, if, the, if this big brush feels awkward to you, you can kind of lay it, load it with paint and then lay it against the edge and pull back right of your drawing like that so that you're not getting so much uh, into the into the, the subject that we're painting ourselves. It's interesting that we're spending all this time working on the background, right? We haven't even paint, started painting the cup yet. So notice you, when you get that brush handling is definitely a skill. When you get better at it, you're going to be able to do a lot. And this is why I want all you beginners starting with a big brush. Everybody thinks they have more control with a small brush. But let me show you how damn annoying a small brush is. I'm sitting here and I can't cover anything. And um, and it takes me a long time and it leaves a particular kind of mark that I then have to either justify or get rid of. Whereas this big brush takes care of all this business very quickly. So I know it feels a little bit awkward, but that's the beginning. Why are we painting this orange when we're not, we're going to cover this up with the, Emma, that looks great. We're going to cover this. Oh, you know what? There's one other area that's dark. It's the coffee. There's a little bit of coffee in here. You can get that too. There we go. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Have the camera situated perfectly. So I don't wanna, here, I'm going to take this down for just a second. If I can photograph it. You guys can see what it looks like. I love this color. Orange is like really awesome. Particularly awesome. Anybody know? Anybody know why we're doing a layer of paint that we're we're going to cover up with more paint? Why are we doing that? Any idea? To make the colors on top pop more. Yeah, because look at how flat this first layer of color looks, right? It's pretty, but it's still pretty like flat. Um, so we need to layer paint to make it look um, more dimensional and have more depth. So, uh, so, so one of the things that we will do is start with what we call a values painting. It's usually a single color and uh, uh, reflecting the lights, the mediums and the darks. That's why we're still working with a, that's why we're still working with a black and white because we're not interested in the colors yet. We're more interested in the values, the lightness or darkness of any color. And if this is a one, uh, this is a, and if five is the darkest and let's say, one is the lightest. These are fives. And now we're going to maybe add a three value and then maybe a one value on these. And I'll show you how to do that. Now you're going to get your brush wet with paint on it. Yes. So that the paint is more drippy. You're going to dip your brush in maybe two or three times. Get the excess paint off it. So that when I hold my brush up, I don't know if you can see this, it's dripping into my hand, right? You don't have to have it drip into your hand. I'm just doing that to show you. And then I can come in here, and even more, there we go. So that I have a lighter orange for the actual cup. It's okay if it drips. And I'm going to do this in the dark part of the cup too, which is around the edge here, like this and there. All right. And then I'm going to use even more water. I want to get paint everywhere. 
for this first layer. So I'm just going to cover the rest with that drippy pink. That drippy. Yeah, take a picture of this so you can see what it looks like. Um, then I'm going to put this aside to dry it. Did you just add more yellow and nope, more and more water? more water? Nope, nope, just more water. Here you'll see it's hard to see with the um, right. colors. So this is just literally the same mix, more water. Here we go. And then I'm going to put this aside so it can dry. I'm going to put it somewhere flat so I don't have all these Streak running through it it's down on the floor. So you guys go ahead and finish. Let me take a look. We have a whole hour for mixing and this kind of thing. So don't stress. Oh, and in fact, I will be right back actually. I need. I need to go get some more paper towel. I'll be right back. Well, it's not too bad. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Hmm. Nice, Caroline. Looks good. Amber looks great. Very good, you guys. Addy, great. Amber, I really like the value differentiation you got. That's nice. That's going to help you later on. It's good. What does that mean? Uh, it, the difference in lightness and darkness. Remember, value is the lightness or darkness of any color. So if you have good value differentiation, you can really tell your lights from your darks. Strong yeah, contrast. I, like, I realized if you, like, it was too dark at first that middle bit and then I just realized that like I could since it was still wet I could just like add more water yeah was... yeah 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 or you can take a paper towel and kind of pop it off if you want yeah. to um so we'll talk about all that stuff more in depth too when we deal with this all right so once again kind of ignoring this stuff on the top although you guys are welcome to try and add it in if you want to um what we need there's not very many See, I'm going to pop point them out. There's not very many light areas. The edge of the cup there. So this little area is white. This area is white. 
that shape is white. This reflected, uh, this reflection is white. Up oh, there's a little bit of white reflection here, but most of this is really dark. It's kind of a darker gray. So we're going to practice mixing grays today. I'm going to give you a couple of options. I'm going to show you a couple. So let's see. I think we'll want to do my all time classic favorite. I'm going to, I'll tell you what all these colors are once we, once I get them out. We can try three. We'll try. Blue. So this is burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Would either burnt sienna or the kina sidram burnt orange work? The what? The what? <laughs> Tell me again. Kina sidram. That word. Quinacridone. Yes. I okay. have that burnt orange and I have a burnt sienna. These are my interesting. Try the quinacridone orange. I'd be curious to see what happens. Um, I'm not sure. You can also give yourself a little burnt sienna if you've got it. So we've got ultramarine blue plus burnt sienna. We're going to see what that turns up. We're going to try, um, if you've got it, we're going to try. Uh, Alazar and crimson. It's kind of a dark burgundy color. And now here's where I know the colors aren't great. But um, I will take pictures so you can see them. So we're going to do that in viridian green. Sorry, right. one more time. it was ultramarine blue. And what was the second color? Can you see? It's right here. Uh, okay. Burnt umber. Burnt umber. Burnt. So if you don't have burnt umber, you might try burnt sienna. Uh, I'll take a picture of this and send these to you guys in a second. Hold on. Is burnt, is burnt sienna better than the, don't make me say that word again, burnt Quinoc orange? Quinoc <laughs> uh, perhaps. So I'm going to write all these down and send them over to you. So let I just want you to be able to see them. Uh, try the book. Uh, alternate. Alizar and crimson and viridian green. Hey Leah, I don't yeah. have any burnt colors. You don't have any burnt colors? Try yeah. uh, a little bit of, what do you have? Um, yellow ochre. I have yellow ochre. Okay, yeah, not that. You have Van Dyke brown. Van Dyke brown. Uh, try Van Dyke brown. Okay. Nice, Emma. That's great. All right. Owls are interested in dirty and green. And then, does anybody have purple? Yes. Okay. So if you've got purple, go ahead and give yourself a purple. Like it should maybe be deoxyrene purple. If yeah, that's you don't, right. You can mix your purple. So I'm putting in some phthalo blue here. And um, um, Would naphthal crimson work instead of... The other crimson. Uh, Alzar, what does it look like? Um, take, a it, take a picture and send it to me. I can okay. better. It's like English. It's nap, napthal, napthal. I know, I know. I, not the tube. I need to see what the color looks like. Okay. So take the color out and then send a picture of me and then I'll do it. Good, Emma. This is looking great. Um, so I'm mixing purple. If you've got purple, you'll put it here. And then you might want to try yellow ochre which I know that Addie has. So she just read it out. Leah, yeah. I have bril brilliant purple and I dioxine. Dioxazine, uh, I think will be the darkest one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And I know you guys don't all have these colors. So um, let's say yellow ochre. But if you do, let me know and I'll give you options. This is Phthalo blue plus quinacridone. <laughs> it doesn't exactly slip off the tongue. Red. Here, let me take a picture of these so you can see all of these. Uh, natural crimson looks like it'll work, Emma. Try it. It, it looks a little lighter than my olive iron crimson. I'll show you what that looks like. 
Here's the alizarin and crimson. I'll show it to you a little bit on the side here. It's a little bit darker. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a little bit more burgundy, but I think it should it should still work. Oh yeah, mine is like bright pink. Almost. Yeah, so it might not give you the dark that you, it might not give you the gray that you want. And then we're gonna put some white on the canvas. Could be any white. And I've got that down here. So we're gonna try some mixes to see if we can create a gray that you like. And for some people, this might be different than others. So you have options, I guess is what I'm saying. That's why we're gonna practice with these. So I'm gonna start by mixing ultramarine blue. I've got a little bit of that here and some burnt umber. I'm gonna mix it together. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and mix it in to see what kind of gray it gives me. It's kind of pretty. It has a certain kind of gray. This is pretty good quality. I think uh, I'll take a picture so you guys can see it, but I think you'll see. So I'm kind of trying to mix a gray. So I start by once again, and here as I'm going through, I can take my paper towel, wipe this off so it's clean. And then I'll try Alizar and Crimson and Viridian Green. See what happens. Looks pretty dark. If you feel like your, your gray is looking too like one of the colors, add more of the other color. You want it not to be too blue or too green or too red. You want it to be more. Yeah, I can see when I added this, I added way too much red. So now I'm gonna dump in a bunch of green. There we go. Oh yeah, now I'm starting to get something that's a little bit more, <laughs> now it's looking too green, need a little bit more red, but I'm not gonna do too much. So you kind of have to mix, sometimes you use too much of one color, you don't get the gray that you want. I'm gonna use more white. Are we mixing like multiple grays or is it like- Yeah, trying... we're mixing multiple grays. Okay. But like to use multiple grays or just to like see which one works the best? To see which one you like the best. You might use more than one though. You might use more than one. I'm also showing you how to mix colors, right? All your colors. So each lesson we try to do like, cause this is what people have the most trouble with. And by the way, and then here's the last one. This is like, so first I'm gonna mix a purple down here and then I'm gonna add purple to yellow ochre let's see what happens there interesting yeah I want you to get an idea of what different and then if somebody remembers how why did I pick these particular color pairings anybody know why did I Okay. Because they're they're opposites. Yes. And so opposite colors make brown. A plus Addy. They're complementary color pairings. Excellent. Right. So let me remind you of what the complementary color pairings are. Or if you don't know what they are, let me introduce you for the first time. color pairs. We've got blue and orange. We have yellow and purple. And we have green and red. So when we put these colors, and let me take a picture of these so you guys can see how these look. So practice, it's really, um, it's good to know how to mix your colors, right? Here we are, there's this whole thing. Here are the different grays. You'll see they look pretty different. This one's looking a little bit blue. I need to mix it some more. Um, so when you put these colors next to each other, they pop each other forward. Blue will pop orange. Um, yellow will pop purple. 
green will pop red. That's why you see a lot of school colors, these colors. You see a lot of sports teams colors, these colors, because they want the jerseys and everything to be quite visible. If you mix these two together, you get a neutralized version of the other. So uh, there's a lot of grays in painting, so much gray. It's funny, even in a very colorful painting, there's a lot of gray areas. So um, I want you guys to be familiar with what these different mixes do. You can kind of pick the one you want, but I think we'll be using it. You might, you might use all three. And I think we can do, yes. How is the burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue working out? Are you liking that, Greg? That works well, but it's like a little like I prefer the the crimson and the viridian green color. I, it's, that's a really beautiful color, isn't it? And it's quite it's cooler, so it's interesting. These are cooler colors, and these are warmer, so these will look a little bit more muddy. And these will look a little crisper. Does that make sense? But you'll have preferences. I know the real truth of this is you guys are going to have preferences as you go through and you see. You're going to see which ones you like. Uh, so it's fun to experiment. Um, really, so this is really a blue orange, right? Burnt umber and burnt sienna can be both interpreted as orange and they can also be interpreted as red. So you could mix green with burnt sienna as well and have a kind of, but it'll make something different. Uh, this is red and green. This is purple and yellow. So these are the three complementary color pairings and the different kinds of grays you get from them. I just think it's kind of neat to know how this stuff works. And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go get just a little bit. Anybody, and pop, pop up if you've got questions. Spend a little bit of time getting to know these colors. <laughs> One second. And a little bit of hot water for my tea.
Anybody want to send me what they've got or are we ready to start painting? Are we ready? Are we ready? Oops, did I? Sorry, sometimes I turn my volume down. Somebody say something so I know I can hear you. <laughs> I just said, let's paint. Let's paint. All right, so now we've got our palette over here. We've got our source uh, kind of over here. Let's see if we can fit our painting here in the middle. So now, by now, your painting should be dry. Got a little bit here. And still with your big brush. I'm going to be cleaning out, squeezing out the extra water of my big brush. So just like I, in the order I did with my, my painting, I actually want to start with the darkest areas first, because that's going to help me modulate my lighter areas. So I'm actually going to start by, uh, actually, you have a choice. You can take one of these two mixes to make your dark. So you can, I'm going to do burnt umber and ultramarine blue. But you could also do this with viridian green and alizar and crimson with your with your red green mix or your purple yellow mix with no white in it. And I'm going to start painting. Oh, you're not quite dry there, little buddy. That's okay. And this going around the edge here is kind of a hard edge. So notice I'm taking my big brush. So really important control technique. Taking my big brush and I'm loading it with paint. It's not very wet. And I'm lining it up with the edge of my cup and pulling backwards, right? Pulling away from the subject. You can also use, you can also use like the edge, the corner of my brush like that if I want to. And if I wanted to, if I want to get really fancy, I can use different kinds of, I can use different dark mixes. And look at how, it, I want you to see how beautiful and rich this looks. So look at what the orange is doing. And in fact, if you look really closely, you can see that little bits of the orange are popping through and making this color look a lot more rich than if I just laid it on a flat canvas. So this color is kind of helping me base, build the base that I want. You're gonna, so that's a, the only problem with, with the acrylics is that they dry so fast. Don't forget to leave your little hole, your little triangle here, your little hole there which we'll use a different color for. And then if you want to, it's interesting, like the background, even though the background's quite dark, it's got kind of a green reflection. So I might try a little bit of, I'm gonna clean my brush out. I might try a little bit of red and green in the background. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can pixel you, but you want it to be dark, fairly dark. And even add a little blue in, a little green and blue. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, nice. So I'm coming around the edge here. I'm doing the hardest part first. You don't have to do this part first if you don't want to. Don't worry if you get a little, see, I got a little paint in here. That's not a problem. So feel like you can be free to kind of muck around. I want more green. Muck around with your paint choices. All of these are hard edges. I haven't gotten to the soft edges yet. I don't know if there are any soft edges in there. If I'm like, I'm kind of looking at this cup and thinking that this needs to come in a little bit more. So notice how I can go right in with my background and reshape that. 
Uh, now that's probably a little bit too far. <laughs> so we'll go back in and fix that later. I'm getting my brush wet again, then squeezing it dry. I am adding a little bit more green. Don't worry if you don't get exactly the same color each time you mix. No, 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 no. What's that? Oh, sorry. No, my cat just sat like in my paint and is trying oh, it. Yeah, they get really excited about that stuff. They get so excited, cats. And by the way, you guys, when we do a subject, so we're doing a similar subject in all the painting classes, it will still be a different picture. So yesterday's um, class, which was West Coast uh, art, so at nine o'clock your time, was a, with that blue coffee cup. Tomorrow we'll be doing at 11 o'clock your time, East Coast time, I should say, not always necessarily your time. And, you know, we'll be doing this one. So if you want that practice of dealing with the different perspective of uh, looking down at something, uh, you're welcome to join. So each, each of these lessons, also all of these lessons are available on the video channels. So you can go back and find them. Yeah. Sorry, here we go. I'm kind of working around this tape here. I'll have to address that later. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, Emma. It's got a kind of a purpley grayish glaze. You'll have a new appreciation for gray once you start to paint. When we first start painting, you know, the amateur thinks the more bright color, the better. But when you get into it, you realize that a little bit of light color can go a long way towards, um, towards uh, showcasing the bright colors that you do have. So you begin to fall in love with gray because gray is what helps you do that. You know, it's just like, you can't have happy times unless you have sad times, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, I guess it's a little bit cheesy. Oh yes, and then there's a dark in here. So once again, you can pick your dark, although I think it's really a burnt umber or burnt sienna in blue with a little bit more brown in it with a little bit more brown in it for the coffee. So I've already run out of that mix. I'm adding more burnt umber up here. You can't really see it, sorry. I'm adding some. And I'll get in here. And I can come here. I will let you go to a littler brush eventually, but I really want you to get used to what this big brush can do for you. The big brush is the revolution. Send me a picture when you're done. Ask me a question if it's not working. If it's not working, that's totally fine. We can, we can do, you can and figure it out. This is a lot that we have gone through. This is a, a lot of information. So um, let me know. Wait, I think I just gave myself a Hitler mustache. It's kind of
Oh. <laughs> I keep it there. Don't take it away, Amber. Do not take that away. That is part of the painting now. <laughs> That's, that's mine. I had to uh, go make sure that she didn't like cover my entire apartment in paw prints. So I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's just awesome. Oh, I love it. Yeah, cats get really, cats get excited about art. They like it. And uh, I don't know if you missed this, Amber, but you'll see I kind of screwed up the edge here. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. Woo. Sorry, what was the mix for the coffee? It was just burnt umber or burnt sienna and ultramarine blue again with more brown in it. Okay. Yeah. I find it this time of day. So what is it? It's three o'clock for me. It was three o'clock for me when we started class. I like tea, but I'd also recommend booze if it helps. <laughs> Except for you, Addie, you don't get to have booze Not yet. <laughs> I gave you permission, Addie. <laughs> no. Nice, nice. See how pretty, yes. So now this is starting to come forward. All right, I think we're ready to start adding in the lighters. So I'm gonna suggest, okay, Janet, see you later. I am gonna suggest, I'm trying to decide if we should clean our brushes. I think we'll be okay, actually. So I'm gonna say, clean your brush out. So let's talk about value for a minute. If this is, if values are the lightness or darkness of any color. So if this is a five, and let's say this is a one, how would you describe the base uh, underneath all these flowers? What, what number would you give that? It's not a one, right? The ones are the whites. Is it a four? Is it a three? What is that? What would you guess? Two to three. Yeah, I'd say maybe even a two and a half, right? So it's going to be significantly lighter, but not as light as this. So it's going to be lighter than this, but not as light as this. So let's say two and a half to three. So when you're getting your uh, mix together, your mixes probably are dry. You may have to mix them again. I think I kind of like the purple yellow mix. So let's see, I'm gonna make some more of it. And then I'm gonna get some. Notice I'm using my paintbrush right now. I'm gonna put some, you can use your paintbrush if you want to. And then I'm just really, it's that, I'm going to lay it down. That still looks pretty dark. So I might add a little bit more white to it. I know that because when I put it next to my dark, I really want it to stand out. 
as dark. Need more water. So I've got a little bit more water on my brush right now, and this is kind of rolling a little bit easier. But you'll see that the pro the, only, the problem with that is that I keep going back in and making more gray. It's a little bit more see through. So if I want a more All right, and then here I definitely need a lot of paint. So here I cut in my mark a little bit far. So you see I'm actually just going right over the edge to thicken. So I can go over paint if I I can go over paint if I uh, put it in the wrong place. I can erase with paint. I can add with paint. We'll be moving to watercolor. There we go. Notice we haven't done, we haven't even thought about the whites yet. It's kind of dark in here too. It's kind of that same value in here. Then no. that this edge And then, and then, and then, and only then can I go back in with a thinner brush, maybe a thin pointy brush like this one. Squeeze out the extra water and do a gray, a white with just, grab a white with just a little bit of gray in it to come around here and add in these lights. So it's kind of light. Uh -oh, I'm gonna have to wait. I got dark here, so I'm gonna have to wait till that dries until I can get light enough. It's quite light here. I if I can just load up some white on my brush. Sometimes you can just load up the lighter color and get the white that you're looking for. I can even add in sort of using my little brush, I can add in these areas may look better once it dries. You see how I'm adding in these uh, areas of white where the reflection, where the reflected light is. It's kind of satisfying, isn't it? So what I want you guys to do for the rest of class is decide what value you'd like to make this. You can put any color you want, as long as it's light. Um, and I want you to think about what else your cup needs. I'm looking and seeing. Way that we could use one of the up if we have like that another grade that we made and didn't use. That's yeah, still totally. You totally could. You could use maybe one or two grades just to make it more interesting. Now I don't know if you saw this, but I just realized my cup was a little bit thick, so I took a white uh, line here to sketch out where I want the cup to end, and now I'm going to go in with the background, which is dark here. And I'm going to bring the dark background up to the edge of the cup so it's thinner. Also, my cup is kind of sticking out a little bit here. So I could use my background to kind of clean up 
There we go. Yeah, and you can play with other colors. I just realized I had this really cool, you, you know me and my teal. Let's see. I have an obsession with teal. I've got this light turquoise color for the, that I might use for the background. I still feel like this doesn't look right, so I'm going to adjust it again. So don't feel bad if it's hard to make this work because... As you notice, I'm going back and forth with this edge quite a lot. There we go. That's a little bit better. I know. That's, I like that better. So you see, I can keep kind of tweaking the shape by using my background. And then I might, I want to use this turquoise, but I want it to be the proper value. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to make that, I'm going to mix it with a lot of white to make it very light. But you guys can use whatever color you want for this background. You do want it to be lighter in value than your cup. Oops, and I messed up my shadow, so yeah. So now you get to have fun with it. And if you want to, you can try and add something from here. If you want to, you can totally try and add something from here. Uh, I will move this so you can see it. You can add a piece of it if you want, or you can just keep your cup like a simple color. I'll move this over here. It's feeling too dull. I kind of feel like my background is sort of dull. So I might use a little bit of this turquoise in this olive and pencil and see if I can get something that's more. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. So see, I can play with color as well. I can play. As long as my values. Sorry to like um, really rewind, but other than the white on the coffee cup, is it different colors or is it all mostly the same shade of gray? It seems to be mostly the same shade of gray. So if you, well, actually, if we look close, we can see other, let me see, we can, there's a couple of things happening. Let me get more into detail. All right, so I'm gonna pull some, some lighter grays in. So as you come towards the edge here, there's kind, it's a little bit lighter. That's because, uh, that's called the reflected edge. And also I lost my, here. So as we come towards, this is a really great question. And that is, as something turns away from its darkest point, just looking to see if there's any other reflected edges here. There's a few up here. And in fact, everything's a little bit. So if your paint is still wet, you could just go in with white over. See how I'm starting to get A little bit here. It's a bit, a little bit darker here. So if you wanted to, you could go in with your grays. A little bit darker towards the base here. Um, what else is happening? I see a few reflected edges down here. You might have to look at your copy on the WhatsApp thread. I can send this over again. I see a few here. Up here. 
So now I'm just kind of going in with white over my purple. Also, it helps to really keep going over and darkening. Sometimes you have to go over a couple of times to relight. This. Sometimes when you add in your background, you lose your edge, so you gotta go back in. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else there. Yeah, the design kind of gets in the way of us seeing more of the reflections, right? Also, another little interesting side note is that right here where the cup meets the base is the darkest part of the shadow. It gets a little bit lighter as it comes out. Maybe here, here, here. Does anybody need to see? I feel like I'm losing my edge a little bit here. So you see how I did this? I actually took, uh, it's brown that I've got, or blue, bluish brown that I've got on my, so I was feeling like I was losing my edge between here and here. Also, I totally mucked that up. That should be coming down here. So I can actually go back in with a thin line like this and then go back in with my gray, my darker gray color, come right up to the edge of that line I can make that, I can almost paint over the edge and make it kind of disappear. And yet still I have a feeling of a line here. You could do that all around the edge of your cup if you wanted. You could do a kind of strong dark contour line and then paint up to the edge of it with gray to make it disappear. And don't hesitate to add some of the designs on the cup if you want to take a stab at them. Look at how every time I add a, add a new thing happening, and in fact, I think those lines would be really helpful here. So I'm going to give myself a kind of dark line, a dark bluish brown line here to come in to the edge of the cup, around the edge of the cup here. See that? See how I'm going in with my little thin line? And then I'm pulling that dark up. Oops. So this is what we call cleaning up. We're cleaning up the line. You might have to go back and forth a couple times. By the way, you guys, great job at not being confused by the designs on the cup. 
a lot of people struggle to see what's underneath the thing. And you, none of you did. You did really great with that. You did just awesome. There's a kind of a medium gray here I'm seeing. And notice, this is where we kind of have the time to go into more detail. So I noticed that although it's not light, kind of a medium light, medium color that comes in here. It's a little bit lighter. Get that right. And then I can make this a little bit darker. Oh, that's too dark. And I can make it a little bit darker around the inside rim. So there's actually three values in this cup handle. There is a one, which is this light area. There is like a three, which is this dark area. And then there's like a two, which is kind of between the light and dark coming around the outside edge here and coming down and around. There's a few little swoopy lights in here, like right down here. Sometimes you add your darks in and then you have to go back in and lighten again. That's okay. We're always playing around with our value changes. And as you notice, this is a pretty simple cup, but it's kind of a cool painting. Because we're, pl we're, pay we're playing with the values. I'm gonna come back in here and lighten this because when I did it before, That helps a lot. See how when I go over, when I when I let it dry, when it's dries, I can go over and put like bright color on top, bright white on top. Then that bright white really shows up. How's it going, everybody? I feel like I'll think the colors are one color and then they like dry and I'm like, oh. It dries a little darker. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. 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 It dries a little darker. Good observation. That particularly happens with acrylic. Sometimes it happens with, um, sometimes it happens with uh, uh, oil, but not as often. Acrylic is one of those things where you really see that happen. So it's good, you're learning. We're learning what our tools do. Notice that the more you add of uh, these sort of differences, the more this painting reads as three-dimensional. Notice that there's a lot of back and forth. I'm going back and forth too. To try and get this right. <laughs> now I'm feeling like I want something like totally different on the background. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just 
see what happens if I add some pink and white. <laughs> Just to give it some kind of color and pop in a few places. Let's see. Maybe I should put that down here. Where the pink and white should be here. Oh, yeah, I kind of like that. So see if I decide I don't like my, my color, my background color, I can totally change it. Orange and the head. I'll get rid of the yellow side. I'm like, ah, uh, I need to keep this dark. Oops. See, as I play around with the different elements, kind of sticking to values, the same values, the lightness or darkness, but playing around with the color, I can get more interesting marks. So I've moved more of the green. I'm mixing green and red now and putting them in here a little bit to mimic that fence that's in the background. Well, that is starting to look good. I mix the green. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So see how I'm fiddling around with these different layers to get them to... Wait, why don't you add up top? I added a little bit of turquoise with some uh, Alizar and Crimson in it to make it a little bit more green. And now I'm adding a little bit of that into my shadow as well. Kind of a off the turquoise. Is it something that would work that's not turquoise? Uh, I no, you'll have to mix. Tur I mean, it's it. That's a whole lesson in itself. <laughs> Mixing turquoise. So uh, play around with one of the color color combinations. Mix blue and orange and put them in. Mix uh, a little bit of green and red and put it in. Mix, uh, how about try mixing viridian green, a little bit of yellow, and then some red and see what happens. See what color you get. You might get something close to crimson, but it's hard to do turquoise. That's why they're so, and oh my God, guess um, what time do you guys think it is? Well, I know you can look, but can you believe two hours just went by? Let's go for a few more minutes. I want you, I feel like everybody's in the flow right now and I want you to keep going. Oh, Amber, that looks great. Could you send a picture to the chat? Absolutely. Hold on. Sorry, I, I got carried away and started working on it without um, <laughs> taking pictures here. Yeah, I kind of like how this is starting to look. There it is. Fun. I mean, if I wanted to, we could try by putting in the red, the pink flower there. But it is the end of class. So no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so that will just kind of be like a, a tease. Addie Nice. Um, I like what's happening here. Uh, so Addie, your, your, cup needs to be narrowed in a little bit here. Can you see that? You need to trim a little bit of the edge off because right now your cup is like 
really this edge should come right to the edge of the cup and your your cup uh, your cup edge I, I really like these colors that are happening behind and also Addy, you want this part to be lighter much lighter so pick a color that's lighter or add more light and that'll help your um, cup pop out more this really is the lightest part of the painting besides these areas so take your take a little brush with white and start by trimming up your edge of your uh, the the left edge of your cup so that it lines up with this top area here doesn't go past like that and then you can take your background go in behind it to to clean up that edge good job good job I really like this background color that you've got going here. And I love, Addy, I really love this too. I love this um, little white swoop you've got. Do you see how much that dimension that gives your cup? Very nice. Super. All right. Let's stand for uh, five more minutes and then uh, everybody take a picture of their cups and send them in. This has been a really quiet class. Nice, Jean. Ooh, I like that kind of olive lighter color up here. I think that works. Nice. Nice. Ah, oh, nice. Look at how warm that is. So I know, Amber, you haven't even done any other colors. You might just keep this orange. It looks great. Good job, you guys. I did actually do several things over that orange. Oh, did you? So you just kept it orange? I like it. It's well, I love I tried, I actually used uh, a very light, like I used the leftover gray. Mm -hmm. and, and then I actually went with like some like yellow ochre because the gray didn't, was like too gray, gray, gray. Nice, nice. I like it, I think it's beautiful. Look at how rich those colors are and look at how different these are. Look at how different everybody's is. Um, 
that's one of the things I love about how different these classes send in the rest of your work you guys let's see it. Freaking any did anybody enjoy this kind of fun yeah. Now you have a perfect base if you want to try getting some of these designs on go for it and send it across the thread <laughs> when you're done i'll resend it to make sure everybody gets it. Did anybody find this kind of relaxing. No. You're all like, we're too tired. Don't bug us. Yes, we're relaxed. We're relaxed. It started very stressful, but then it got relaxing. Because because uh, we were pushing, I was pushing the uh, perspective stuff. Nice, nice, Emma. Very nice. Because I, I need to something about drawing over. <laughs> Oh yeah, I well, I'm I'm sad about the paw print. It, it went away. You're so, um, oh, but, yeah. but I love it. It's really. I know. Cute. Nice glow there, <laughs> um, guys. There's something about like the light on the right hand side that I feel like is not quite right. Well, you like, don't. It's, it's your off. shapes. Uh, there's too much light here, so this should be. This is not as bright as what's happening up here. Um, if okay. you look at your uh, handle, it actually comes more straight, so it's a little bit wider. Let me show you. Your handle is coming down mm -hmm. too low. So if you take a little bit of white and go, so you've got this going on. This is what's happening for you. Can you see that? That's where your handle ends. Yeah. So if you went like this, added a little triangle of white. Okay. That will be part of it. It's helping. And then really getting this shape needs to be a little bit wider. I mean, I'm just being really nitpicky now, right? No, but please. this shape needs to be wider as it comes towards us. So it's okay. thinner here. It's like a triangle. That will help. And then if you can get this third value in here. So if this is a one and this is a three, there's actually kind of a two in here. Okay. That comes along the edge down like that. See that? Yeah. So there's actually three values in the, yep, there we go. One, two, and then three. It's interesting. It's funny how we all want to go straight to the detail. I gotta head off, guys. See you later. All right. Well, we are well past class. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, this could keep going. Good to see you. Good to see. Hold on. I'm just removing the spotlight. Let's go into gallery view. We'll say hello. Jessica. Oh, we lost a bunch of people. <laughs> people just left. Here are the diehards right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Great work today. Jean, Thanks. I like how you uh, handled, you switched up the lights and darks and had those varying grays on your cup, behind your cup. I think that worked out really well. Oh, thank you. I was trying I like to go it. with the wood grain. I was yes. going to put the turquoise panels. And I went, I'm just going to stick with wood grain. Let's just stick with wood grain. <laughs> <laughs> really wonderful work. Show everybody your, um, hold up before you go. Show the, show how the mountain scene turned out when it was. Framed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at this, you guys. Here, hold on. Like it, Addie's still going away. Everybody said Addie and Jessica and maybe Emma too. It's still just going away here. <laughs> Keep going. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. 
Wow. It's, yeah. It's Mount Rose from Reno Valley, which is where my brother lives. So that's going to be oh, awesome. He's going to love it. Jean, it's awesome. It. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yes, it is. It's yeah. so beautiful. All right, you guys. So I'm going to, this video will be available in about an hour uh, on the channel. So take a look for it. Um, Thanks, and, Leah. Uh, and Jessica, thank you for your offer to teach perspective. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, you fun. saw how excited yeah, everybody time. was. We'll it's going to be time. great. <laughs> yeah. well, I hope All so. right, you guys, take care of yourselves. I'll see you Bye. soon. Bye. Join tomorrow Bye. if you want to. 11, 11 yeah. o'clock your time. The, the reason I haven't been joining Leah is because for some reason I keep having interviews then. So good for you. <laughs> anything exciting, like, anything think, exciting that you're really excited really about close on this one company. It's down to two of us. So who is, can you tell us or do you, don't jinx it? No, I won't. Don't talk. jinx it. Don't you, jinx you've it. probably not heard of them anyway, but still right. it's a good company. Well, if they're, they know what's good for them, they'll hire you. <laughs> yeah. Smart, they'll hire yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited, Bye. Gene. All right. Keep us posted. Yeah, I will. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys.